G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel for yet another Phantom Draft. We have less than a week to go until the draft finally kicks off. It is my probably my favorite day of the year when the Eagles are not in the grand final, which is most of the time. So this, for some bizarre reason, is my favorite time of the year. I love the draft and I can't wait to get stuck into yet another Phantom Draft with you. This might be my second last one before the actual draft. I'm thinking it's worth doing one now because things are changing a little bit in terms of what we're hearing through the media, in terms of you know what clubs are interested in what players. Toomey's coming out with a little bit of tidbits. Broadly speaking, it does feel like we're getting a little bit less in terms of rumors of what's happening compared to other drafts. For whatever reason, perhaps clubs are just keeping their cards closer to their chest this time of year than in previous years. But whatever, we're going to do another one and we can be sure there's going to be some rumors so it'll be worth me doing one again right before the draft so the last phantom draft that i did on the channel about a week ago that included all 58 picks i'm going to keep it simple in this video and go with just the 40 but perhaps uh, closer to the draft if you guys want the entire 58 or 57 or whatever it's going to be uh, just let me know in the comments and i can do a full one next time so without messing around too much i'm going to crack through and go from pick one from west coast uh, all the way to pick 40 for the brisbane lions or at least that will be what the pick is after academy picks i, I do get a lot of comments from people not quite understanding that the order will change due to academy bids which doesn't bother me it's just that people are getting really angry about it so just allow for the fact that the picks in this order will be different to what you see in terms of what picks clubs currently have but anyway before we crack in if you could do me a favor and consider subscribing to the channel i set an audacious goal of hitting twenty-four thousand by draft day i need about 336 to get there in the next six days which uh, i've left my run late but if there's anything you can do to help by subscribing that would be much appreciated all right so here we are at the start of the draft and this part of the draft is probably not going to change too much um, we're going to start with west coast selecting harley reed trades have been paused for a little while uh, obviously on the november 10th was the last day clubs could facilitate pick trades but obviously there is live trading to consider as well for the purposes of this video i'm not going to do live trading so i'm going to assume west coast have pick one and they're certainly going to take harley reed if they keep it pick two again i'm going to double down on or quadruple down on jed walter being bid on here by north melbourne as the clear second best talent in this year's draft so he'll go to the gold coast suns as a matched academy pick north melbourne once again i'm going to have them taking colby mccurcher out of tasmania the best available midfielder and at pick four it does seem increasingly likely now north will take zane dersma i was sort of pushing the daniel Curtin train for a little while but that seems like it is a little bit dead in the water and potentially Curtin could slide a little bit further so at pick five Hawthorne with the choice of Daniel Curtin the reason I'm not going to give them Daniel Curtin again the more I think about it is while they need to keep back they're getting one later in the draft in Will McCabe and I think they will take the small forward in Nick Watson with this selection as a you know far more unique player at pick six the Western Bulldogs this is an important pick for them they could consider a number of talents they really don't need Daniel Curtin so he's going to slide a little bit further they're going to take the Lark medalist midfielder in Riley Sanders out of Tasmania they probably need to be looking at addressing their midfield transition some aging midfield stars in that team not so much in the immediate term but further down the track Riley Sanders getting him in now will do them a world of good Melbourne, I'll again have them bidding on Gold Coast Ethan Reed, the Ruckman from their academy, and the Gold Coast Suns will match this, giving them two picks in the top seven. So Ethan Reed to the Gold Coast Suns. Melbourne, this one, again, this pick could kind of shape the draft. There's been links to numbers of, a number of players. There's, you know, Caleb Windsor, there's Nate Caddy, Connor O'Sullivan to consider, um, depending on who's available there. But I'm going to have them taking Daniel Curtin because I think the selection makes sense. Whether or not Curtin settles as a sort of roaming halfback, whether he's a key defender at the next level, whether he's a midfielder, whether he's a key forward, I'm not too sure, but I think he's too good a talent for Melbourne to pass up here. So I've got Melbourne taking Daniel Curtin. At pick nine, the Giants are on the clock and this one, I've got them taking Caleb Windsor and this is largely just because it seems like what we're reading from Toomey, etc., is that the Giants kind of have their favorite here in Caleb Windsor. So not necessarily my next best available talent, but he seems to be a favorite of the Giants and I've got them taking Windsor at this pick. It does seem like he will be a top 10 pick and the Giants are a particular big fan of Caleb Windsor. So at pick 10, Geelong. They've got a few talents to choose from here. I tossed up between O'Sullivan and Nate Caddy and I've decided to go for Nate Caddy, the key forward. I just feel like particularly later in the draft or even in future years, key backs can be picked up a little bit cheaper. So Geelong will probably err on the side of picking the key forward here, which leaves O'Sullivan to be then taken by Essendon at pick 11. Again, a few talents here. I could consider. I know that Essendon don't necessarily need a key back, but O'Sullivan is a really, really high level talent. And I just think he'll be too good to pass up and Essendon do have later picks for other needs. So 
after Essendon, we've got Adelaide selecting James Leak. James Leak apparently is a bit of a favorite of the Adelaide Crows, and this is probably the edge of his range. Some people have him as high as Melbourne at pick eight. He was one that I forgot to mention as a candidate for Melbourne's pick eight, but I've got Adelaide pick picking him here. Not a key back, which I you know, ideally would like to pick for them, and they would have been hoping O'Sullivan falls one more pick, but James Leak as a running medium defender who can intercept and perhaps he could transition into being like that next Tom Dode. But the thing about like about Leak is you could probably play round one and play pretty well. Melbourne then again, being the team that bids on everyone in this particular draft, it doesn't really matter where I have the bids, but I've got Melbourne uh, double dipping. They're going to bid on Jordan Croft from the Western Bulldogs, which we match, a key forward father-son prospect. Then they'll bid on Gold Coast Jake Rogers, and Jake Rogers will join the Gold Coast Suns at pick 14, which leaves Melbourne back on the clock with a live selection. And this time they're going to take Darcy Wilson. And this one is probably, you could see him going early. You could see him going as early as maybe pick 10 to the the Cats, I don't think he'd go pick nine or eight or anything like that. But Darcy Wilson here available as that forward utility is really, really good value. So Melbourne combined Daniel Curtin with Darcy Wilson. I think they've done really, really well with those two selections. Then we've got Sydney again in the last couple of drafts. I've had them taking Zach Ostelsky as a massive bolter. Well, I thought I'd mix it up in this particular draft, give them another bolter because I think Sydney can be quite unique with their selections. And there is increasing noise that they're interested in young Ruckman Will Green. Now this would be a little bit early for his range, but again, Sydney like to be a little bit wacky at the draft and it serves them well, generally speaking. So Will Green to the Sydney Swans at selection 16. St Kilda, I've got them bolting on Charlie Edwards. There is apparent interest, according to Toomey, from both Adelaide and St Kilda for Charlie Edwards. I think on talent, this is not too far off the mark. I really, really rate this kid as a good, smooth-moving, balanced midfielder. They go a little bit early, but another player who could probably play round one. Adelaide then enter the draft for the second time. So they've got James Leake at this selection. One player that they're reportedly very interested in is Colton Tholstrup from Subiaco, and that's who I have them taking here. So again, resisting the urge to take a key back, I believe that they're interested in Colton Tholstrup, and I think this is where they'd have to take him because he won't be available at the next pick, in my opinion. North Melbourne are on the clock again. Now, they've taken McCurcher and Dersma. So again, in the interest of giving them a balanced haul of draft picks, I'll have them bid on a key back in Will McCabe. So Hawthorne's father-son prospect will join the Hawthorne Footy Club as that key back that they need, giving them a balanced look of Nick Watson and a key back in Will McCabe, which leaves North Melbourne on the board again. Now, they've got three of the next four picks, as I say in every mock draft. They will need to consider who is likely to be taken by the Giants that they want. So that's why I've got them taking running defender Riley Hardiman out of Western Australia. One player that is, is liked apparently by the Giants, North Melbourne, uh, I think even Collingwood to some extent. Previously, I've had him a little bit earlier. I don't think he'll go any later than this. The, the Roos will want to picture the Giants for this particular selection. So the Giants kick off with pick 21 and they'll take Harry Demetia. This one isn't so much about rumor. I'm not too sure exactly where um, Demetia is likely to end up, but it's going to be around this range. And I think this is about right. It also kind of helps that he's a Vic Country lad and, you know, Vic Country lads tend to leave less. At least that's the narrative that gets suggested. So they're going to pick someone who's likely to stay. That is clearly part of their recruiting strategy. And I think Demetia presents as a good option on talent as well. So North Melbourne, for the second time in this draft, have two picks in a row. So this is where I see them maybe bolting a little bit on a couple of prospects uh, to round out and give them a balanced uh, draft haul. And I've got them taking small forward in Phoenix Gothard. We know that they like players called Phoenix. They got two forwards, one on the taller end in Zane Dersma, but still not a key forward. Uh, then they've got their small forward in Phoenix Goddard. Then they got two defenders, Oli Murphy, the key back, and a running defender in Riley Hardiman. So again, real balance to this draft haul. And when clubs exit drafts early, they tend to take a bit of a bolter with their last couple of picks. So that's my logic there. Collingwood enter the draft, and I'm led to believe from the comment section, and yes, I did take a little bit of input from you guys from previous uh, comment sections and previous drafts that I've done. Collingwood are probably more likely to be looking on the taller end with their selections, and that's where I've got them taking Western Australian key position player Zane Zakastelski. Zakastelski, you know, played as a ruckman in the Waffle Colts grand final, but probably settles as a backman at the next level. So he fits an aid and 
and this is around about the right range on talent, I would argue. In the last draft, I had Adelaide bidding on Sydney's Caden Cleary, so I'll just do that again. Again, this is kind of revenge for Michael Anney last year. Doesn't really matter where the bid comes, but Caden Cleary will join the Sydney Swans through their academy, which leaves Adelaide their third selection in this draft and likely their last. And this is tough because I wanted to give them a key back, but I don't know if there is a clear one available on talent having missed out on Murphy and Zach Ostelsky. I will err on the side of going tall with this selection and I'll pick the Ruckman in Taylor Goad out of South Australia, another player who there is rumored interest from the Crows and a number of other clubs. He's a 207 centimeter Ruckman with a really high end potential, uh, it has been reported. Again, it kind of just gives balance to their, their recruiting hall in this particular draft. Would have loved a key back, but perhaps they're happy with Butts and Murray. And to be honest, picking a key back in this particular draft won't necessarily help in the next couple of years. It's gonna take a number of years anyway. So perhaps they address that need somewhere else. St Kilda are then on the board with pick 27, and I've got them taking to Giath, who is a running defender, younger brother of Chankuth from Hawthorne. He's an academy or next generation academy player for the Hawks, but uh, it seems inc decreasingly likely that he lasts that long. And Toomey has him ranked as the 22nd best prospect in his latest phantom form guide. So on that logic, and the fact that he's also linked to St Kilda as having interest in Giath, I think this pick makes sense. Then we've got Carlton entering the draft for the first time, and they'll pounce on Lance Collard, who has slid a bit. I have made arguments as to why Collard might slide a little bit, despite being quite talented. West Coast will be pissed because they, they would love to take Collard with the next selection. Carlton on best available talent and the fact that they could use a small forward who could play early and just general forward half scoring power. They'll be happy to take Lance Collard and roll the dice with him, which leaves West Coast on the board for their second selection. And they will take Archie Roberts. And this player has slid a little bit in recent times, but a really aggressive halfback who could potentially play on the wing. There has been some reported interest there as well. Pick 30, Geelong, having taken Nate Caddy, will probably again look to, well, it's probably a best available selection, but I thought another midfielder would make sense for their list transition, and they'll take George Stevens, who is an enormous inside mid at uh, 6'2.5 and 101 kilos. I, I'm going to say that in every fandom because I just think it's ludicrous. It's got to be a typo. Carlton are then back on the board, having taken Collard, and they're going to take a number of selections in this draft. I'm just going to go best available here without a real feel for what their needs are. I'm going to take Nathan Philactides, a small defender to go with their small forward in Lance Collard, which leaves Richmond entering the draft for the first time. And again, I feel like there might be a midfield focus, but again, another team in transition, probably in a position to go best available. I've got them taking Cooper Simpson. I think he is a really exciting young midfield talent. I think this is who I had them taking in the last one, but again, best available midfielder here makes sense for Richmond. The Brisbane Lions now enter the draft for the first time. And uh, like I've said in previous videos, it doesn't make sense for them to be looking for midfield talent with so much access to midfield talent in recent times. So again, another team at the top of the table who is probably open to picking a longer term prospect. Well, Ari Schoenmaker is a key position defender who to be fair, could probably play earlier because he's got weapons and he's got uh, that big long, I think it's his left foot. Longest kick in the draft anyway, could probably play early, but again, it makes sense to just add another tall prospect who will take a little bit of time to reach his potential. So Essendon now are back on the clock with their third selection. So I've given them O'Sullivan and no, sorry, it's their second selection. And in this particular pick, I've got them taking small forward Cohen Sanchez from Western Australia. Small forward and perhaps a little bit of a need for them. Either way, Sanchez is one that's kind of bolted a little bit. And in uh, recent times, I've even heard him linked to the Adelaide Crows and their last pick is at 26. So we could see Cohen Sanchez a little bit earlier than this on draft night. Uh, but if Essendon want to take Cohen Sanchez, they'll want to do it before Fremantle's first selection, which is coming up. Now Collingwood on the board now with their second selection selection, having taken a key back in Zach Ostelsky, they'll balance it out with Archer Reed, a key forward prospect. Again, I, I keep making this connection. I just think it makes sense. Collingwood probably need a young key forward. This is about his range. They're on the market for tools in general. Archer Reed here makes sense, if not to Essendon, which leaves Fremantle entering the draft for the first time. They have broadcasted that they are looking for forward half players. I will give them Logan Morris out of Victoria, an undersized key forward who can play back as well. But goal scoring options make sense. Probably you need to use this pick to get Logan Morris as well. Essendon then bid on Gold Coast's fourth academy player. Again, and it's a little bit arbitrary as to where he goes. I don't really care, but this is probably around the range. Will Graham joins the Gold Coast Suns as a midfielder defender at pick 37. Now Essendon having taken O'Sullivan 
and taking a small forward in Cohen Sanchez can probably now look for a midfielder, but probably a midfielder with a point of difference, which is why I've got them taking, uh, I think it's Sandringham's 194 centimeter midfielder in Will Brown, who is a tall, smooth moving mid. And again, we know SNN probably, if they are gonna pick a midfielder, it'd be one that's a bit bigger bodied with a point of difference, like I said. So I've got two selections to go in this particular mock draft. The West Coast Eagles have their third selection, having taken Harley Reid, uh, who you presume will be a midfielder forward, then a running defender in Archie Roberts. I got them probably on the lookout for talls here. I feel like they've missed out on a lot of the good ones, which is why they're rumored to want another top 25 pick, I suppose. But we're going to go best available tall here, and I've got them taking Mitch Edwards, who will go just before pick 40 as he's part of Fremantle's Next Generation Academy talent. So if he gets picked up after 40, Fremantle can match it, which is why West Coast will want to use this pick to take Mitch Edwards. A really talented ruck that is sliding down the order for reasons unknown publicly, but with West Coast obviously sort of embarking in the early stages of a rebuild, they can roll the dice on a talented ruckman, which leaves Brisbane rounding out the draft with the same player I had them taking at pick 40 in the last draft, in Riley Weatherall, 197 centimeter key forward prospect. Again, same logic. Team at the top of the ladder not really needing midfield talent they're in a position to take a couple of talls and the talls in this draft from about 15 to 40 there's a good amount of them in this particular draft and I think next year it's going to get a little bit thinner in terms of talls very midfield heavy so they'll have that in mind so they'll pair up Ari Schoenmaker at 33 with Riley Weatherall. So there you have it guys, that is my top 40 based on a little bit of rumor and innuendo that's going around on Twitter and a, you know a fair bit of personal opinion in there as well. But as always, I welcome your comments in the comment section below. Like I said, I'll do one more right before the draft. I think that's handy because things do change right before the draft. Maybe not clubs actually changing their minds, but new rumors come out and stuff like that. You know, For instance, Hawthorne just flew over Dan Curtin for one more interview which kind of could lead you to believe that they might take him with pick five. Having said that though, I believe that's kind of customary for Hawthorne to do their final interviews in the last week anyway. So I think there was a rumor that they, was it them that flew down to Dunsborough to interview Ruben Jimby last year and didn't take him. So when it comes to draft rumors, you do have to sift through the crap a little bit, but either way, we're gonna have a crack at predicting it. So thanks very much for watching guys. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.